Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is such a fun one. I can't wait to show you guys how I painted this gingerbread house in a candy cane, kind of a wonderland. So we're gonna start with a large chalk round brush, two to three inches, cerulean blue, just kind of twirling it all around, having fun with my paint already, even though this is mostly gonna be covered up, I like to just play around and create neat patterns with my brush. I've got a violet purple that I'm adding to the outside edges of the canvas now, and I'm just um, blending it into that wet cerulean uh, blue. It looks really, really pretty together. And then I'm going to just quickly dry it off and come in with a long liner brush. I'll kind of switch up from my long liner brush to a micro mini liner brush, and I just thought I had so much fun painting snowflakes yesterday that I would incorporate a few just off to the side around the left side and corner up here, and just using some titanium white, creating little lines and um, different sizes for my snowflakes, and some of them are going to be a little bit swirly, so I'm just... Um, just doing whatever comes to my mind, having fun with this. There's a lot of different options out there for you guys um, for different types of snowflakes. There's tons of stuff, reference photos out there. Uh, it's really fun to just make up your own too. And you can follow along with me and paint yours just like mine if you want. So I'm going to do this for a little bit, like I said, creating a few different sizes. And then I'm going to even add uh, little dots and dabs and soften with my fingers after to make it look like more snowflakes, maybe a few little glowing stars up in the sky. And here I've got my little micro mini liner brush. This is um, quite a bit easier to use when painting um, smaller, finer details like uh, these little snowflakes here. So I'm just going to continue adding these little lines and then even little circles um, and then a star and a cross inside each of them. That also helps like just kind of overlapping and overlapping and layering your lines can make it look really pretty. Um, later on throughout this video, I'm going to even be adding some of my neon paints, creating pastel tones with them and brushing and filtering over some of those colors onto these snowflakes in a few different areas. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more um, about how to paint snowflakes, I've got a full length tutorial right now on um, uh, a whole painting, a whole video on big snowflakes, like the whole canvas is just snowflakes, uh, where I layer over and make them look like they're sparkling and kind of prismatic and have an iridescent kind of a look to them just by using my neon paints and titanium white. So I'll leave a link um, somewhere off to the side of this video or towards the end or in the description below this video.
so I really like how these snowflakes look I want to just finish this off with adding a light dust of snow so I'm taking my crafting old toothbrush here with some water titanium white and I'm going to spray turning the direction of my brush as I spray and flick a little bit more I just want it to look uh, very soft and delicate not too bright because this is a nighttime sky and I don't want it to compete too much with the light and the brightness coming from our gingerbread house. I've got a large flat brush that I'm going to be working with right now for just creating some more swirls for our path leading up to our candy cane and gingerbread house here. So just kind of making it look like a ribbon swirling, um, making it wider towards us in the foreground and then narrower. Um, as it gets right up to the base of the house there where we're going to have our little doorway that helps to put the house in, into perspective so it's set back a little bit and we know that because it gets smaller that pathway gets a little bit smaller um, and that's got to make sense in your paintings right you've got to have some perspective near and far in your paintings getting the basic shape i want for my path here i'm just going to scumble the excess paint out of my brush making it look like there's a soft hazy sort of a glow around over top and around the side um, the paint is pretty my pathway is pretty dry now i didn't use a thick amount of paint so it's setting into the canvas and drying quite quickly and then I'll just kind of dust and scumble over some of those uh, snowflakes up in the sky. I'm going to switch over now to my burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And I'm going to start the shape of my gingerbread house, which is really kind of funky and whimsical on an interesting and dramatic uh, angle like this. And yeah, I'm using both of those colors um, to create that gingerbread uh, colored house. Uh, they're a really good combo and for my lighter areas for highlights on my house I'm going to use a little bit of white mixed with both of those colors sometimes using a little bit more of my yellow ochre. So we're going to really make this dramatic and fun and whimsical like I said by creating a pointy very narrow and pointy roof line that goes up to the top there and kind of pointy and curvy on either side making it narrower um, almost like a birdhouse um, coming down towards the front entrance of the house. So as I continue to add a little bit more color to this little gingerbread house, I'm going to add the roof line. Now we don't see very much of it because of how it's situated and the angle that it's on. Um, but I want to just have a little indication that we've got a little roof line there um, that we're going to attach a chimney to later on. So I'll continue here just adding a little bit of white to my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna and just lightly pull and drag up to that skinny pointy roof line at the top and then add a little bit more of those colors inside before we begin our windows. Now we're going to create uh, a few different windows, um, just basic shapes guys, like the first window we're going to do in white will be a little oval or like an egg shape. So we'll do that one first, very simple up top in our little house maybe there's a little loft up there so we'll have this little uh, oval shaped window and then I'm going to do a little rectangle right below add a few little lines in for the grid and then I'll add a rectangle on either side which will be the little shutters Next, we're going to apply uh, another coat of white paint in like an arc shape. So just over the top, sort of like a rainbow arch. And then we'll come in with another arch for our doorway. Just create as much detail and ornateness. Uh, is that a word? Ornateness. <laughs> um, any kind of... A design that you want so just use your imagination you can add some swirls in there and some scrolls um, so however you would decorate your gingerbread house or if you could live in a, a candy uh, gingerbread house you could just you know design it yourself it's so much fun just to play around and 
and or you can copy mine if you want, no problem at all. Um, I'm adding little bits of um, white here, making it look like there's icing or icicles, uh, kind of just dripping and dangling off the roof line, just for fun, getting a feel for the paint um, and what direction I want to take my little house in. I don't really know at this point, it's just uh, coming to me as I um, continue to paint one step at a time. So here for the trim on the corners of the house, I thought it would be kind of fun to create little swirls, candy cane sticks maybe. Um, so I'll do those white first and then um, I'm going to come in with a little bit more white and red later on. I'm going to use the corner of my brush with white to create little dots and dabs for lights or candies. So it's going to be a combination of both. By the time I finish this painting, I'll have a few lights up there and some candies as well. Okay, I'm going to continue to add some more little dots and dabs kind of just tapping with the end of my flat brush. It's sort of split in two and I'm kind of using that to my advantage to make an, a neat little pattern here around that arch kind of shaped door. Now we'll come in with um, half moons for the top of our windows just for fun and then um, some little windows that are the shape of the house so they're wider on the top and then they get narrower on the bottom. They almost look like the shape of a lantern when I paint the lantern on the top of the lamp posts. Um, and then I'm going to just pull and drag and flick very lightly for some um, icing or snow dripping off of the bottom of the windows. I'll do little half moons again on the side of the house and add some windows there as well. Everything is kind of on an angle on the side of the house because how it's um, it looks like it's slanted because of the position, how it's turned. Um, so you do want to pay attention to that and make sure that you're on an angle, you're pulling your lines on an angle just on that side. And then I'll add a few little lights, little dots there of white paint. Now I'm going to come in and add uh, the door here and the lines that I want in it. So I just decided to keep it simple, do a little line there, one across, and I'll add like just a little dab there for the handle. And then I'm gonna start painting my lollipops. So it's just gonna be like a bunch of lollipops in the foreground and um, leaning on different angles to make it more fun and interesting. And then I'm gonna add a little puff of smoke here with the corner of my brush. And then we'll add a little chimney with burnt sienna after. I'm just gonna use my finger to soften slightly right here. Um, make it a little bit softer and more transparent. So burnt sienna, just a little uh, rectangle there. And then I'll go back to that and add some uh, white for snow on top as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to continue adding highlights and shadows here. Burnt sienna straight, just right underneath that roof line where we're going to have our darkest shadow. And continue building up the highlights and shadows on here um, before we begin painting um, more lollipops. Um, I'm going to come in between these windows add a little bit more of my burnt sienna and then a, a shadow right on that arch above the doorway but partially so it's wider on the bottom and then it comes over halfway and gets skinnier and I'll do a little pull and turn above each of those other windows including the oval one at the very top I'm going to add a grid right inside these windows as well and I was thinking that it, the house actually looks cool just like this. Sometimes it's nice to uh, leave out all the colors and just have um, a gingerbread house with white. That looks pretty too. So it's up to you guys. There's a few options. You can use any colors that you want for this. Really make it your own or do the same thing that I'm doing. And I want to see all of your versions. Be sure to uh, share them on our uh, Facebook group. I'll leave a link below for that. So I'm going to add some round circles here, getting smaller and smaller, three on each side from the top. So we'll have the one on the top and then three on either side. A little chimney there on, on the side with a puff of smoke. I kind of just dab on a bit of paint and then blend it out with my finger. And then I added a little bit of snow or icing um, on the top of the chimney as well. 
So I'm doing a few little lines and notice how I'm doing them on different angles. That really helps to make this look fun and whimsical. Um, so candy canes, I'll add a few candy canes in here as well. And just circles for our lollipops and little lines here and there for uh, the sticks for our lollipops. And these are really fun to paint. They're really, really easy. You can use a few different brushes. You can use a round brush, a liner brush, or if you're really careful, you can use a very thin, small flat brush, um, depending on what level of uh, painter, what level of painting that you're at. It can be a little bit easier just to use a liner brush when doing that. So I'm gonna go over some areas here, making them brighter where I need them to be before I begin adding my colors. Okay, so I'm before we begin adding all the pretty colors, all my fun neon colors, I'm going to take my yellow ochre with a little bit of white, and I'll just show you how I'm going to mix that up, the ratio, just a little bit of white with some yellow ochre, and then I'm going to push and have enough paint on the end of my brush to work with and apply in and around the windows and the trim where I want it to stand out and uh, be a little bit brighter. So we still have all those shadows and the mid-tones, the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre base that we began with. Um, so this is just another addition to help um, the house have a little bit more light to it and life. So we'll do this, finish this up, and then we're going to come in with all the fun colors. I can't wait. Okay, so it's time to add our colors now, and I'll just show you what I'm using. These are uh, Luminous Heavy Body Neon Acrylics from Holbein, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of these colors. I probably will, though. Who am I kidding? <laughs> so here they are, plus a few other colors. We've got Viridian Green, Pale Green, and Light Blue Violet. I'm going to list everything below in the description of this video for you guys, but I'm going to begin with a little round brush, Titanium White, and my Neon Yellow Cool. I'm going to just randomly pick different spots for my lights and my candies to dot and dab this color. I'll add a little bit in the windows as well, and that'll be later throughout the video. Um, the first color I'll add on the windows um, in a few minutes will be my other yellow, and it's a warm yellow I'll be adding. Um, but for now, I'm going to take more of my uh, yellow mixture that we made. It's kind of like a lemon meringue um, color. It's really pretty. I'm taking just a little bit of my viridian green with it and I'm going to make more of a, a minty green now so I've got pale green um, a little bit of viridian green in there and that pale yellow so we'll make a nice wintry 
minty green color and we'll just start accenting around and, and building the colors up here um, one at a time. I'm just going to outline these and then I'm going to add some above this oval window up here as well. Going to outline this to make it a little bit darker and then come back in and brighten the inside a bit more, just the one on the top. So just taking more of that, the light color that I made, going right inside. And that just helps make your objects that you're painting look a little bit more 3D, just creating the highlights and shadows. Now I'm gonna start the swirls on this one lollipop, but before you guys begin this one, I didn't like how I started this, so I actually end up painting over this and doing a better job a little bit later on. So I don't like to leave that out. I like you guys to see little mistakes I make and how I fix them. And it just kind of lets you guys know that no matter how many years someone's been painting, even if they're uh, very skilled, they still make mistakes and um, it's important to know that, okay? So no matter where, what stage of painting you're at, you're never going to be perfect. We're always learning and growing as artists. So here's the color I'm using for the inside. I love this luminous yellow warm, mixing it with a little bit of white. And I'm going to come inside each window and the doorway and add some cozy life to this little uh, gingerbread house. Okay, now I'm going to add some of my yellow and white, overlap it carefully inside the light warm yellow that we have there. This will just brighten it up a little bit more inside, but we want to leave it that um, peachy color towards the outside. I'm going to also use a little hint of my neon orange as well in some areas towards the outer sides of the windows and the doorway. And the next color we're going to use with a clean brush is my light blue violet with my luminous rose. I just took both the colors. I didn't blend them. I kind of just like watching them blend and getting that sort of natural organic look right onto my canvas. It's really fun and it's an exciting way to paint. And I'm just going to outline my shutters um, and my window frames and just add, start adding some color to everything now. Um, keeping that main base of the gingerbread colored house though it's always there there's always that hint of that there um, but this is just really fun to come in with the colors now I, th I think you guys are really going to enjoy this painting um, I'm coming in now with more dots and dabs from my lights maybe little tiny candies it's whatever you guys want it to be but I'm using a little bit of my warm luminous yellow here with some white and then I'm again coming in and doing another layer of my blue and rose mixture. Now it's a luminous, it's called luminous rose. Uh, if you don't have this color, and I know a lot of you guys watching probably don't, um, it's by Holbein, but if you don't have it, it's really similar to quinacridone, viol quinacridone violet or magenta. Uh, but you can use any colors that you want. You can mix pink with blue and you can get that kind of violety color by adding a little bit of white to it as well. So here I am starting to really have fun creating my little candies and lights now using my yellow and my white first and then I'm going to come around outline them in my neon hot pink. I love this color. Um, I will leave a link below for you guys if I remember. I'm so terrible for re remembering uh, to leave the link but um, you can find Amazon paints at your local fine art store. Um, Michaels doesn't have them yet, but I know they do sell them online. Um, they're a little bit pricey depending on where you get them from, but if you join my um, Facebook group, private Facebook group for my tutorials, there's a lot of suggestions out there from uh, viewers like you that um, are inquiring about finding them and where the best price is. So there's just lots of advice on there for you. And depending on where you live in the world, there's people from all over on our or in our group that can kind of guide you and and help you find them but i'm just going to keep coming in here with some more colors adding them one at a time having lots of fun with all oh, my pink my neon orange yellow and 
then I'll be adding little bits of icing and snow dripping in those pretty pastel colors as well. I just think it's so pretty to add a little bit of color wherever I can. So I'm going to continue to do this. And I will be adding um, little hints of these colors in the smoke coming out of the chimney. I was kind of just like an afterthought. And I just thought, oh, that would be so whimsical and kind of magical and fun to make the the smoke that's coming out of the chimney match the really pretty pastel colors that we've used here today on this house. And I'll just add a little bit more, almost like a dripping lacing effect scoops and uh, uh, like a garland with my white. And we can start working on our candy cane now. So I've got my neon red. So I'm going to do little twisty swirls, right? And then leave the spaces for white in between. I'm going to add little ribbons on my candy canes and I'll be using my greens for that. And each of the lollipops will be swirly as well using different colors, some green, some red, and even some of them orange and my luminous rose color. I'll make the sticks for the lollipops twisted as well like a candy cane just because it's fun. And we'll just go from there. Just adding one color and one brush stroke at a time. I hope you guys really enjoy watching this one. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful holiday with uh, your loved ones and friends. And I'll see you guys really soon in another video. Bye.